right, let's roll up our sleeves because it's time to dive into how to effectively use your network. We don't go in blindly. Let's start with a bit of theory. Mark Granovata introduced the concept of the strength of weak ties. And actually he suggests that it's the weak ties that play a crucial role in social networks and not the strong ones. Strong ties are formed between family members, close friends, colleagues, and usually there's mutual trust involved, emotional connection, regular conversation. And it's these ones, the strong ties, that provide us with support, value, and a sense of belonging. On the other hand, we all have weak ties with people that we know from a distance. Acquaintances, friends of friends, colleagues we don't often work with, etc. And Grinovitas' argument is that these weak ties hold value because they grant access to new information, opportunities, resources. These weak ties, they form bridges between social circles or clusters, allowing information to flow between different groups. It means that new information can find its way to you through the different networks that aren't your own. Job opportunities can find you that way. Weak ties can really broaden your horizon and propel you forward. But listen, we do need both. Strong ties for support and trust, weak ties for information and opportunities. Now that you're aware of this, you can start asking for help from these weak ties. So people that you're somehow connected to but don't know very well. And don't think, mm, I don't know them well enough to ask for this thing. That's exactly the theory of the strength of weak ties. It is a smart decision to make. Are you still feeling a little bit hesitant? Know that people are very happy to help. Flip the scenario. What would you do if someone came to you with an authentic request for help? Time for self-exploration. We're about to create an overview of your contacts and you'll see that you'll get the tendency to write down your strong ties first, but really try to think of people outside of your immediate network. When you're ready, grab a sheet of paper, a pen, and start with writing three columns. So, at the top of the first column, you write down the name of your contact. The middle one is for who introduced you to this contact. And the third column is for who you then introduced your contact to. Let's go to an example. I'm sitting in the university next to Isabel. So my contact is called Isabel and I write her name here. I introduced myself because I was just sitting next to her. So my name goes here. And after some weeks, I introduced her to my friend Jonas. So Jonas's name goes here. I hope I'm being clear because now it's your turn. Take your paper and start the exercise. You can actually pause this video as you do. You know what? I'll pause it myself. So, are you ready with your list? Then let's start with the analysis of this list. We can look at mine. If you look at the middle column right here, you can see that Ronja actually appears a couple of times. And that makes sense because Ronja is someone who always introduces me to new people. She's very fast at making connections. And, you know, she really helps me to expand my network. So we could say that Ronja is a broker for me. When I look at myself, so in the third column, I see that I have made connections for others, but there are also a few blanks meaning that maybe I could do more of my best to help others reach out to new people. And I think I actually already know a few people who could benefit from that. If you look at the second column, you see that my name appears a lot, and that might mean that I find it easy to introduce myself to new people. And when you're like me, you might want to watch out for the self-similarity principle. And that means that you approach people that are similar to you when you look at background, experiences, education, etc. And the downfall or the pitfall of that is that having many similar contacts might limit your view on the world. Now let's focus on your exercise. Take a close look at the columns you filled in and ask yourself the following questions. Do you frequently appear in the second column? Who are your brokers? Are there many or few names in your third column? 
Are they mostly people from your immediate surrounding? Did you also list weak ties and can you add some more? Now it's your turn. Take your paper and start the exercise. So, did you learn something? Was it an eye-opener? Keep this list somewhere, don't just throw it away. And strive to be more of a broker sometimes to people, even without expecting anything in return. And be vigilant that you also look for contacts outside of your own social circles. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Uh, honey, I'm gonna call one of my weak ties to ask if he knows how to fix the bit. I heard he's pretty handy. Oh, great. Oh, hey, dude, uh, I have a favor to ask. Me and uh, Kelsey, we broke the bed yesterday evening. <laughs> and I wondered if you uh, know how to fix it. Okay. Yep. I understand. No problem. Well, he doesn't want to do it, little drama queen. Huh? Why? Uh, he says he's not interested because he's your ex-boyfriend and you just recently broke up and he's still not over you and he hates me. Michiel, what the f***? What? At least I'm not afraid to contact my weak ties, Jesus! Let's dive deeper into the motivation behind networking, as your attitude with which you approach it largely determines your success. And there's this famous book written by Adam Grant titled Give and Take. I asked Erwin Knut, our networking expert, about the concepts introduced in this book, the types of givers, takers and matchers. Many people think of networking as a kind of a scale. I give something to you and I expect something back. We call that reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look from a distance to networking, we can distinguish different roles. One of them is, for example, a matcher. I know you're interested in theater and improvisation theater, but also I have a friend who has the same interest. So if I introduce you to my friend, I will be a matcher. Mm -hmm. And you will remember that, you will think of me uh, because I have introduced you to that friend and I will be in credit towards you. So that's the first role that we can see. Mm -hmm. The second one is a taker. That's more an opp opportunistic person. He or she is looking at a contact and see what can I get out of that relationship for my own benefit, for my own interest. So I walk around, I make connections, I develop my network, but for my own interest, I take. Huh? You have probably uh, been able to see these kind of people when you are in a reception. They walk up to you, they start a conversation, but immediately their eyes go to the other person and they're off because they are looking for opportunities. That's the taker. Mm -hmm. Now, the last profile that we can see is a giver. These people have the natural tendency to give information. They're open, they're always ready to give advice, to share their information and knowledge. They are givers. Huh? They're very important in building structures and networks. They're also sometimes central nodes in a network, the givers. Now, there's two aspects to the giver. Research uh, says that the givers in their full performance or their final performance in an organization are both on the top end, so givers can be very performant, but also on the bottom end, meaning they cannot be failing their performance because they're so much involved in giving that they don't have time enough to do their own jobs. Mm -hmm. So in essence, these are the three roles in networking. Okay, so the roles are matchers, takers and givers. That is right. Can you be all of them? You can be all of them, but not at the same time. Okay. I think we all will move from one role to another. And sometimes it's good to be a taker. Sometimes you go into a network and you wait and see what's in it for me and is it important for me to join that network. Uh, sometimes you can be a matcher. And matchers, like I said, are a very important role. You don't get a direct benefit, but you get credit because you have been able to connect people together. And then finally, the givers. A lot of organizations, givers are also promoted for their work. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they enhance, they are the glue of the network. They connect people together and also share information of their own knowledge. So they make other people better. And that's why a giver is an important part. But remember, you can be a very successful by being a giver, but also if you're too much a giver, there's no time for, to do your own job. So watch out for that as well. All right, thank you very much, Erwin. I understand that it's important to recognize the three roles. That's right. So, two things I'm taking with me from this chapter. One, 
Don't forget to talk to your weak ties and be more of a giver without expecting anything in return. Watch the next chapter if you want to learn how to expand your network. Thank <laughs> you.